tonight. Anybody, regardless of their religion or affiliation, if they embrace American values and they place the Constitution at the top level, then I'm supportive of them. Dr. Benjamin Carson clarifies his comments about a Muslim being president. Mark Stein is here tonight with reaction. The world is a more dangerous place. Then Carly Fiorina unveils her foreign policy plans amid a surge in the polls. Terrorism is not waning as a threat, as our president tried to reassure us. Newt Gingrich will weigh in on the shrinking GOP field. The scale of this crisis is outstanding. And a special report from the front lines of the refugee crisis. All of that, plus Frank Luntz reveals which candidate is connecting best with you, the voters. Hannity starts right here, right now. Welcome to Hannity. Tonight, Dr. Benjamin Carson continues to be attacked by the media and politicians for his comments about a Muslim being president, while Hillary Clinton gets a free pass for what she and her campaign did back in 2008. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But first, Dr. Carson, he clarified his remarks that caused such an uproar last night right here on this program. Take a look. If someone has a Muslim background and they're willing to reject uh, those tenets and to accept the way of life that we have and clearly will swear to place our constitution above their religion, then of course uh, they will be considered uh, infidels and heretics, uh, but, uh, but at least I would then be quite willing to support them. Now, Hillary Clinton was quick to attack Dr. Carson for his original remarks. She wrote on Twitter, quote, can a Muslim be president of the United States of America? In a word, yes. Now let's move on. Now, we've got to remind you, our viewers, that back during the 2008 campaign, Hillary Clinton and her staffers, they were trying to raise questions about then-Senator Obama's faith. You may remember this. You don't believe that Senator Obama's a Muslim. Of course not. I mean, that's, you know, that there is no basis for that. You know, I take him uh, on the basis of what he says, and, you know, there isn't any reason to doubt that. You said you take Senator Obama at his word that he's not right, a Muslim. You right. don't believe that he's a Muslim. No, I mean, no, why we're would I? There's no, right. no there, there is nothing to, to base that on, as far as I it's, know. As far as I know. Joining me for reaction, the author of A Disgrace to the Profession, Mark Stein, is with us. Uh, Mark, it goes deeper than that. The Politico reported, the Telegraph reported, Mediaite reported, all these, all these outlets reminded us that it was the Clinton campaign that circulated an email questioning Obama's citizenship. Quote, Barack Obama's mother was living in Kenya with his Arab-African father late in her pregnancy. She was not allowed to travel at the time. So Barack Obama was born there, and his mother took him to Hawaii to register his birth. According to the email chain that they sent out, the Clinton sent out. That's so right. she's the original birther, if you will. Yeah, that's that's a good way of putting it, Sean. A, a lot of the sinister, exotic, mysterious foreigner stuff about Obama was actually started by the Clinton campaign. Uh, he, to a certain extent, has uh, done his best to vindicate some of it. But the fact is that this was a, 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 an intra-democratic party dispute started by Hillary Clinton trying to paint Barack Obama as the exotic other. She started it, the original Bertha. Yeah. And David Plouffe at the time said it's the most shameful, offensive, fear-mongering we've ever seen. And people seem to forget they had to fire two Iowa staffers for circulating the email. So, you know, it's kind of funny. Right. Ben Carson says it. She's lecturing Ben Carson. What the, is this the height of hypocrisy on her part? Well, I think it's actually worse than that. Ben Carson was asked a theoretical question. I mean, Muslims seem to be, uh, uh, the Muslim question seems to be the equivalent to the contraceptive question uh, four years ago. Uh, nobody was talking about it, but suddenly we've all got to have a view on whether there should be a Muslim president. Uh, unless Donald Trump is planning on coming out as a Muslim, Bernie Sanders, maybe he's Muslim, but there isn't actually a declared Muslim candidate. But Hillary is being particularly uh, ridiculous because uh, she specifically attacked a specific person uh, for his faith and his background, whereas Ben Carson is just entirely legitimately uh, answering a hypothetical. And there are plenty of uh, there are plenty of reasons uh, to look at the conflict 
uh, between Islam and free societies and discuss that hypothetical. It, I mean, Hillary Clinton is, is resting on the Constitution. She says the Constitution doesn't impose a religious test. No, but it imposes the Constitution imposes a constitutional test. And for many observant Muslims, uh, the paramountcy of the U.S. Constitution uh, would, would be a significant problem if you were we, to become we, the chief executive. Well, we could start with freedom of speech. I mean, uh, those right. that uh, are critical of Islam or the prophet, the punishment could be death. Or we, look, we can look at the right. application of Sharia in Muslim countries today. And I went through this with Dr. Carson last night. In other words, in yeah. Saudi Arabia, women can't drive. They can't be seen in public without a male relative. Uh, there are other other Muslim countries where women need four male eyewitnesses for rape. Uh, if you leave the faith, you are viewed as an apostate, the penalty of which is death. Right. So I think right. it is legitimate and it is fair to say Sharia, the application of Islam in Muslim countries, every one of them, to some extent or another, uh, is the antithesis a, of what I'm, our Constitution offers. So that, doesn't that make that argument well, more I'm, legitimate? Yes, I, I think so. And, and what's ridiculous is that the same uh, liberals who are saying, oh, wouldn't it be lovely to have a, a Muslim president? It'd make us even more delightfully diverse and multicultural. Are the same people uh, who uh, a few months back were demonstrating outside the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is owned by the Sultan of Brunei, uh, and they say he's a big homophobe because the penalty for homosexuality in Brunei is uh, stoning to death. Now, wow. the Sultan of Brunei is an urbane, civilized, charming man. And when his country was a British colony, it lived under English common law. And since it ceased to be a colony, it's been getting less and less common law and more and more Sharia. Yeah. Seventy years ago, Pakistan lived under common law. Now it lives under Islamic law. Fifty years ago, Nigeria uh, lived under English common law. Now half of it's under Sharia. Uh, so, so clearly, the, uh, the coming to power of observant, devout Muslims has driven a stake uh, through the uh, legal tradition and inheritance that, that well, this that country raises, also happens that, that to That share. also raises another question. The president, even though James Clapper and our State Department have told us, the highest levels in our intelligence community have told us that ISIS and Al-Qaeda will infiltrate the refugee population, that they want to take as many as 200,000. And I assume that number will go higher over time. Now, I happen to be of the belief that if we risk taking one radical Islamist into the country in the refugee population, that we have made a big mistake and put the entire country at risk. Is, are the Republicans going to fight back on that? Well, I would, I would certainly hope so. The fact is uh, several Republican candidates seem to think we should take these refugees and seem to think uh, that we have the capacity to check their bona fides. I happen to go through U.S. immigration. And how do you and do I that? And I was all concerned in case... How do, how well, do you, well, how well, do you determine the, the, if you someone's a genuine refugee or if somebody is a terrorist that has been trained to lie to you and say that he's here for humanitarian reasons, for a better life for his family? Well, He'll lie. Well, they won't. They won't, they, because it'll be a straight... My, my lawyer told me that my application, they spent six minutes on it. Uh, I would think that, if anything, it's maybe down to three minutes by now. So I would imagine that most of these refugees, it will, in effect, uh, be uh, no more different than what's happening at the Hungarian border, where uh, every so often a bunch of them scramble across the fence and you don't know who the hell they are. And here they'll just be filling in the paper, uh, but it'll still be exactly the same as scrambling over the fence. You'll have no clue who they are, what their real name is, where they came from. So Sharia and the Constitution are at odds with each other. And that's what the American people need to know as we continue this debate. But stay right there. More Mark Stein coming up right after the break. And now that Governor Scott Walker has suspended his campaign, what does that mean for the rest of the GOP field? Also, Carly Fiorina continues to rise in the polls after her very strong debate performance. We'll get reaction tonight from former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich. We'll also have more on this refugee crisis. Do you want migrants pouring out of the Middle East into America? Should we be taking them in? Geraldo Rivera and I go one-on-one -on, -one on that issue and much more.